Hi everyone, Glue from Runshot here. Um, in this video, we are going to cover how to install and start working with Runshot in Grasshopper for doing things like generating 3D models, multiple 3D models from text and image prompts, uh, for rendering your Rhino screen grabs using generative AI models, generating and applying textures, uh, just running uh, text to image models directly in Grasshopper, uh, generating code, a whole lot of other things like that. So to get started, you're gonna to need to install the RunChat plugin. So in Rhino 8, Rhino 7, you can run the package manager command, search for RunChat, and then just click on install to install the latest version. Uh, you'll then need to restart Rhino before you can use the plugin. In Grasshopper, once you've installed RunChat, you will get a RunChat menu um, up here in Grasshopper. And there's two different toolbars in the menu. One of them is for running RunChat workflows, as a little RunChat workflow, um, or RunChat icon, sorry, over here. And then there are a bunch of utility components. So the main component that we're gonna be using is the RunChat workflow component. So let's just click on those, drop one down on the canvas. And when you first place it down on the canvas, it looks like this. It's a node with one input and no outputs. Uh, and if you're using the plugin for the first time, you'll probably also get a little warning here saying that there's no API key set yet. So what we need to do is we need to get an API key for our RunChat account or create a RunChat account if you haven't already. And we can do that directly from the, the Grasshopper plugin. So we're just gonna right click on the component, uh, scroll down here and click get API key. So if you haven't already um, linked your API key, you'll see a get API key button there. That'll take you to a page where you can either log in and get your API key or sign up and get your API key. I'll take you to that page now. So it'll look like that. Um, if you've already signed in, like me, you'll be redirected to runchat.app slash dash dashboard slash keys. Um, if you've already got a Runchat account, you can also just go to runchat.app slash dashboard slash keys uh, to visit this page and get your API key. Or you can also find it from clicking the Runchat menu and going down to manage API keys. Uh, the API keys section is at the bottom of the page, uh, down here. And we can um, create one by clicking create new API key, or if you've gotten here from clicking that get API key button in Grasshopper, it creates one for us and all we need to do is just click copy uh, and then we can close this uh, pop-up window. After you've created the API key, it's not displayed again um, so that there's no chance of accidentally leaking it somewhere else and you can delete API keys that you've created previously if you need to. So we've copied ours over here in our RunChat node, we're just going to right click on the RunChat node, delete that set API key text paste in our API key and just hit commit changes. And then you should see API key set and saved. You only need to do that once. Now it's linked to your account. Um, it gets saved as a environment variable on your computer and um, you shouldn't need to do that again. So now RunChat plugin in Grasshopper knows about our RunChat account uh, on the internet. So the only uh, input to our RunChat node is this ID parameter. And what that's gonna do is we're gonna use that to tell uh, the plugin which run chat we want to actually be running with this node here. So how run chat workflows work is they're a little bit like clusters in Grasshopper. In the web browser, we can build a workflow which might edit images or generate 3D models or post messages to Slack or whatever we might be doing. And then we'll cluster that workflow into a single Grasshopper component so we can use it in pretty much any Grasshopper definition we'd like. So let's jump back over into RunChat and we're gonna go up to the RunChat menu and just click new workflow. And there's a couple of examples we can start from here, but we're just gonna click new RunChat. Okay, so what we've got here is a super duper simple um, workflow with some instructions for how it works and a AI node down here, which will let us talk to language models. Um, this RunChat interface is similar to Grasshopper. You have input and output parameters on the left and right. So you connect data into these parameters on the left 
nodes run when you press the little play button and then you get some output out of them. You can also enter um, information data inputs straight onto the input form on the node. So for instance, we can just say like, hi, and just make sure this is working. It's gonna run the text fast model, say something back, cool, it's working fine. You can change the AI model on this node by clicking on the name of it and then choosing a different one from the drop down. So there's a bunch of models, say for creating 3D meshes, for generating images from uh, text prompts, for editing images, impating images, uh, running language models, multimodal models for creating text and images and generating video. So there's all sorts of cool stuff you can do here. And there's a couple of other video tutorials on our YouTube channel, which will walk you through what some of these models can do. So to start off with, let's um, build a pretty flexible tool in a very flexible workflow. Our workflow is just gonna be one node. We're gonna choose the image edit node. Um, this is a pretty flexible, powerful model, which will perform edits to images in natural language. And we're not gonna have anything in our prompt and we're just now going to turn this node into something that we can use in Grasshopper. So the way that we do that is we need to specify which input and output parameters from our whole workflow need to be accessible to Grasshopper. That way we can expose some parameters that we might want people to change and then we can hide other parameters that we don't want people to change. In this case, let's publish all of these guys. So we're going to publish the context input, we're going to publish the prompt input. We're going to publish the result output. And if we want to, we can also change the name of these. So maybe we call this like image. We could have some instructions. And we got our prompt, that's fine. We can rename this if we want to as well. And then we're going to get the image out as well. Okay, so when we click on these little lightning bolts, what that does is it publishes those parameters and it will expose them um, in our Grasshopper component. That's it, we're done. Let's change the name of our super duper basic workflow here, which is just the default node where we've published everything. We're gonna call this image edit. And we'll copy the ID. So the ID of um, our run chart is always displayed up in the URL and after ID equals. So you can copy everything after that. Big long string of letters and numbers. That is our run chart ID. So back here we can enter our ID. We just right click on the ID input and paste it in. And as soon as we do that, run chart is going to go, or the plugin is going to go fetch that run chart from the internet, work out which input and output parameters we've published, and then display those on our Grasshopper component as if it was a Grasshopper component. So there's nothing really indicating that this is anything other than a normal Grasshopper component, but in reality, you've built exactly what that component is going to do back here in run chart. And so we'll gradually look at building up kind of more and more complex workflows here but clustering them into simple components that we can use in Rhino. Okay, so we have a, um, a component here which is gonna edit any image that we specify with some kind of prompt. And we can provide images in lots and lots of different ways. Um, one way is we can provide images just from our computer. So if we go and look for um, files, Let's find a file. That's a screen grab that I've got of a building. And then we go to the utilities. We can upload that uh, image from our computer so that it is online. I'm just going to say, yep, upload it. Okay, that's finished. We can preview the image if we want to with the image preview component, which lets us preview images which have been uploaded online. So there it is there, that's cool. We can plug our image into our image input of our run chart 
And then we can just provide some regular old natural language instructions for how we want to edit this image. So let's say we want to try and turn it into um, some sort of photograph. Uh, let's say uh, turn this screenshot of a building in CAD into a photograph. Place the building in the natural landscape. See if that works. With every um, or with all of these like generative AI models, often it takes a few times or a few tries to get your prompt right. So don't be too disappointed if the first time you try a prompt doesn't do exactly what you want. Just experiment with a few different ideas. So that's going to run. It's sending our image and our um, text to RunChat. It's already finished. It's going to run our RunChat, running the image edit model. And there we go. It's taken our screen grab and put it in some natural landscape, which seems pretty cool. And of course, this will work for any uploaded image um, that we have. It's not just for um, uh, screenshots from Rhino. You could upload a sketch, you could upload a stream from your webcam, you could upload an image that you found on the internet and downloaded somewhere. Um, up to you. Okay, so that's building our first little run chat node, um, using it to edit images within Grasshopper, importing images from our computer, which are Rhino screenshots in this case. Um, and then re-rendering them in a new style uh, following a simple text prompt.